Good morning. Good morning. I want to say thanks, Lord, for those who brave that weather on the court. You're a trooper. <laughs> uh, but uh, I enjoyed myself as usual, even though the sun was hot. People came out. And, uh, as Brother Rob said, all of the water was distributed and they were appreciative of our kindness and the coaches. Uh, as I said this morning in Bible class, I, I'm, I have to go down. Uh, it's not that I have the money, I don't have the money. Uh, I asked the equipped students to assist me with my player fare which is now 900, it was 825, now it's 900. Um, but I have to go down, my mom's house was flooded and the, I haven't heard from my daughter since the hurricane. I know they are safe, but there's no form of electricity and then the, the lines, I guess the telecommunication lines run off energy as well, so there's no form of communication where that is concerned. Now, my, where my daughter lives, um, I know personally they don't have any transportation. So that is even compelling me more to go and see what the situation is about and how well they are being helped. Um, currently I'm asking like, anyone can donate like a generator under 50 pound um, you know I've gotten someone with a crowbar and an armor already if you have batteries flashlight if you have a, a power you know those electric on saw you want to um, donate um, I can on Southwest I get two fifty pound bags free to travel with and if I raise a little bit more money I can carry an extra one that would be hundred and fifty pounds of equipment or tools going back to assist with the recovery um, the recovery relief effort. Uh, as I said, I'm still owed $600. I, I, as I said, I don't want to put any burden on the church here, but whatever you can help, I'll truly appreciate it so I can get the ticket. All of what I am doing is by faith. This is something that I have done before. I operate by faith, and God see me through or see us through. So pray for the effort. It's not just Jamaica, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, Karaku. Karaku was badly hit. I think the, the eye walked over it. It's like, like uh, a war zone. It looks like a war zone. So these are other islands. And this burial will, won't die. It went through the peninsula, and it, I think a remnant of it is going up all the way up to Texas. And it just won't go away. So. It's not as strong now, but I'm um, still going to bring flooding and, and um, discomfort to those. I guess they need the, the rain, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's very hot uh, on that side. But just keep in your prayers. Um, keep the efforts in your prayers. I'll be able to uh, help whoever I can. There's a church sister, as I said, her entire three bedroom. And every, she lost the furniture. The house was a great uh, uh, This morning, I want to talk about the importance of obedience to God. The importance of obedience to God. I think last week, um, does anybody remember the message last week? Uh, but there's one that um, stands out. The, um, we talk about active, uh, active one, and passive. Passive one. Active and passive one. Come on. <laughs> you remember that message? Active obedience and what? Passive obedience, you remember that? 
So the importance of obedience to God. So I'm going to talk about the importance of obedience to God. We are going to explore the vital theme of importance, the theme of obedience to God. Obedience is more than just following rules. Um, it is a demonstration of our love for God. So it's not just following a set of rules. It's how much do we love and appreciate the God whom we serve. Do you actually know him? Are you have in an intimate relationship with him? An expression of our faithfulness, a way to glorify him, uh, a pathway to receive his blessings. Uh, so we're going to be exploring all of these things. The obedience to God is so crucial and how it can transform our lives. It is very important and we're going to be looking on this. Let's turn to 1 John uh, chapter 5. Um, all the way over there, it's not St. John, it's 1 John. It's all the way to the back of the New Testament. 1 John and then Jude and Revelation. 1 and 2 and 3 John, John and then Jude and Revelation. So, um, 1 John 5, uh, two, verse 2 and 3. By this we know that we love, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. Uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3 to the 6. 1 John 2, 3 to the 6. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Referring to Jesus Christ. We're going to be looking on obedience proves our love for God. Obedience proves our loyalty for God. Um, obedience proves how much we adore and glorify Him. Love motivates obedience. Think of a loving relationship where each person willingly and joyfully acts in ways that please the other. Our relationship with God should reflect this same dynamic. 1 John 5 and verse 2 to 3 talks about by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Do we obey God out of love or obligation? Are our acts generally aligned with his will, designed to please him? Ask God to deepen our love for him, making obedience a natural outflow of that love. Commit to seeking his commandments and following them with joy. Obedience demonstrates our faithfulness to God. I'm going to say that again. Obedience demonstrates our faithfulness to God. Faithfulness is reflected in our actions. Faithfulness is reflected in our actions. A loyal employee not only respect their employer, but also diligently carry out their duty, proving their, re their reliability and trustworthiness. Similarly, our action demonstrate our faithfulness to God. In 1 John 2, verse 3 to 6, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. In our faith, evidence through our 
obedience, or sorry, is our faith evidence to our obedience, or do our actions suggest a lack of commitment? Are we consistent in our walk with God? Reflect, reflect on areas where our action might not align with our professed faith. Seek God's help to live out our faith through consistent obedience. So we now have to identify, just like if when you are identifying any um, uh, things that are abnormal in your garden. So we are doing a lot of cultivation um, going on right now during the summer, right? You know, people are doing a lot of cultivation. And one of the things the farmers a farmer would do, they would go in and see if there's any um, weeds. Weeds that will uh, choke or, or mess with your plant, whether you're doing sweet peppers, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, whatever it may be. And you go and you will eradicate. They are identifying these weeds that should not be there. They are identifying these weeds that are competing with your plant because whether you believe it or not, these weeds are also drawing nutrients from the one, from the earth, where your plant's um, root is. And so you have to get rid of these what? These weeds. You must get rid of because if you don't get rid of these weeds, then those, then those weeds are going to draw nutrients from the plant. What's going to happen is that your plant, even though it may heal, um, um, fruit, uh, uh, the, the kind of bounty that you are expected is going to dimin diminish. Even the size of the, the fruit or the size of the bearing. So the, 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 um, the, the person, the farmer has to go in and identify, identify. And he, when he identify um, the weeds, he now has to take action. He has to take action by eradicating, extracting, uh, removing them from the field so that his cultivation can heal good bearing. Heal good bearing. Obedience glorifies God in the world. Our lives as a testimony, our lives are testimony. A lighthouse stands tall, guiding ships safely through treacherous waters. Our obedience, obedient lives are like that lighthouse, directing others to the safety and love of God. First Peter chapter two and verse twelve. First Peter chapter two and verse twelve. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visited or visit us. Are our lives a testimony of God's glory and holiness? Do our actions lead others to a praise, to praise God? Strive to live in a way that reflects God's character, ensuring our deeds brings Him glory. Pray for opportunities to demonstrate His love and righteousness to those around us. Obedience opens up avenues of blessing. Obedience opens up avenues of blessing. Blessings through obedience. Imagine a child who listens to their parents, guidance, and as a result ex experiences safety and happiness. God's commandment, commandments work similarly, leading us to blessings when we obey. In John, St. John 13 and verse 17, Know that you know these things. You will be blessed if you do them. Jesus was speaking. And in that, we talk about the Jesus becoming a servant this morning and washing the apostles' feet. 
So he's alluding to that. He said, listen, you have to become an humble servant. Do we recognize that God's commands are for our good, leading to blessing in our lives? Are we missing out on his blessing due to disobedience? Embrace God's commandments, church. Let us all embrace them. With the understanding that they are pathways to pathways to his blessings. Seek to obey him fully, trusting in his promise of blessing. So when we obey God, they are pathway, pathways to his blessings. Faith as the foundation of obedience. Genuine faith produces obedience. Real faith produces obedience. A tree rooted deeply in fertile soil produces abundant fruit. Similarly, our faith rooted in Christ produces the, the fruit of obedience. Hebrews 11, chapter 11 and verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Is our obedience rooted in genuine faith? Do we trust God enough to follow his commands even when it is difficult? Even when it is difficult. Last week we talked about this. The passive obedience. Passive obedience is obedient, uh, being obedient to God in spite of even we do not see the way. But God will what? Make a way. Typical example, Jesus Christ is in the garden of Gethsemane. He's crying. No, he is wailing. He's in deep agony, stressed out. But he said, never, I wish that this cup be far removed from me, but it is not my will, passive obedience. It is not what? My will, but thy will be done. <clears throat> Call me foolish, if you will. But I do not see my way out, but I know I will get to Jamaica. I'm having faith. And I'm trusting in God that he will make a way where I can go and help my fellow brethren and family who are in distress. Passive faith, passive obedience. Going and knowing that God will make a way. Blessings through obedience. Faith as the foundation of obedience. Faith as the foundation of of obedience. Genuine faith produces obedience. And we talk about that. <coughs> Strengthen our faith by immersing ourselves in God's word and prayer. Trust that obedience is a natural result of a deep and abiding faith in God. Transformation through obedience. A new creation in Jesus Christ. A child has learned how to walk by, you know, getting up, holding on, falling down, but getting back up, holding on. And someone, a parent or guardian, is there to nurture them and guide them. Consider a caterpillar transform, and you will always hear this in my illustration because I think it's very profound. A caterpillar transform into a butterfly, a complete change from its former state. Likewise, when we believe in Christ, we are transformed into new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 said, Therefore, if anyone in Christ is a new creation, a new creation has come, the old things has gone, the new is here. Are we living a new creation, allowing our transformation in Christ to guide our obedience? Do we still hold on to the old habits and ways of thinking? <clears throat> Embrace our new identity in Christ. Let, letting go of the past behaviors and adopting a lifestyle of obedience and reflects on our transformation. And it's like going into a new career and adopting the skills for you to perform and you see how you blossom and you bloom. 
there is an assurance through obedience a confidence in our relationship with God a well-built house provides security and comfort to its inhabitants similarly obedience provides assurance and confidence in our relationship with God in 1st John chapter 2 and verse 3 we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands do we have assurance in our relationship with God through our obedience or, or are we uncertain and insecure in our faith? These are questions that only us can be, only individually we can answer them. Seek to strengthen our assurance by consistently, consistently obeying God's word, finding confidence in our relationship with him. We also have to look on forgiveness and restoration through obedience because this is a necessity with, the, with us walking with God. It is necessary. Restoration. As you look at an old vehicle, and I have watched these car shows and, you know, car rehabilitation or restoration. I don't know if you watch them, but I love to watch them. And they would go around America and they buy these old cars, some vintage cars. You know, they might find them in an old scrapyard, you know, really rusty. And when they're done with that vehicle, you're wondering if it is the same vehicle. The restoration work is immaculate. It's remarkable. And so understand that we have to restore to move forward. God's grace in our fa failures. A broken vase can be meticulously restored to its original beauty. Likewise, God graciously forgives and restores us when we fail. Don't be afraid to ask God for help. Don't be afraid to ask God to restore our confidence in Him. Don't be afraid to confess our sins before God. Understand that your sin is not a big and little sin is uh, understanding that I have missed the mark I am at fault God I need you to help me with the way how I am treating you oh yes we can neglect God God deserve his worship if you read Revelation chapter 4 God is worthy to be what praise he is worth worshiping Revelation chapter 4 from 9 through 11. The 20, day and night, the 24 elders, they fall down and they worship God saying, You are worthy to be praised. He is worth worshiping. Understand that God deserves his praise, deserves his worship. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 16 um, through to 17 this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them down on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. God will take away our deeds, and he will make our slate clean. See God's forgiveness, brethren and friends, and embrace his grace allowing it to restore us to a place of obedient living. Let go of past sins and move forward in his love and mercy. And so, yeah, I know there are certain habits that we are on to what you call kick, but we have to try and we have to ask God's help. We have to ask him for help to kick certain habits that is fighting competing for God's attention, competing, um, it will um, disrupt our flow, our line of communication with God. You have to be mindful of those things. And as we conclude, let us understand, brethren, that obedience to God is not merely about following rules our instruction but about providing our love 
um, for him, demonstrating our faithfulness, glorifying him, and opening avenues of his blessing. Let us commit to a life of obedience rooted in our faith in Christ, transformed by his love and confident in our relationship with him, may we live as new creation, assured of his grace and eager to glorify him in all we do. Understand, those of you who are not Christians can become new creation. The Bible says that you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In Mark 16 and, 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 and verse 16, the Bible said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not um, will be lost. He also goes on to say that you must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Sadly, there are many millions, millions of people that believe, don't believe in Jesus Christ. And it is a prerequisite for you to be saved that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. When he came on the scene, there were people, religious people, who were denying such. Even though it was documented, it was documented in prophecy in the Old Testament. It was documented in the Septuagint. It was documented in the um, in the, the Alexander uh, um, manuscripts. It was documented, but they insist on denying that he is the Christ. So Matthew chapter ten, verse thirty to thirty-two says, "We must confess, and in order for us to be saved, you must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. By you doing this, the Father will be able." To welcome you into his kingdom. The Bible also says in Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and 5, that you must change. You must make a, a, a 180 turn. You, you must change from certain kind of lifestyle and so that you will be able to walk in the direction of God. And then the Bible said you should be baptized according to Romans 6 to raise in newness of life as the first resurrection. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your commandments and the opportunity to show our love for you through our obedience. Help us to walk faithfully in your ways, glorifying you. Forgive us of our sins, the ones we know of and we do not know of. Have mercy upon our souls. Transform our, our hearts and strengthen our faith so we may live, a new cre live as new creations, confident in your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand.